This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, everyone. This is Lindsay Sin, Deputy Secretary for Women Veterans Affairs at the California Department of Veterans Affairs. Thanks so much for joining us today. It is Wednesday, June 3rd, 2020, and today's webinar topic is social networking, keeping women veterans connected uh, during the pandemic. Today we are joined by three guest speakers. We have Jody Grenier from Foundation for Women Warriors, Melissa Washington from Women Veterans Alliance, and Rebecca Aguilar Gardner from Veterans and Business Network. Before we introduce them and get our presentation started, I'm gonna go through a few housekeeping items and then also introduce a special guest too. So uh, please remember to mute your microphones or your phones. I've been able to mute everyone's microphone from our GoToMeeting software, but if you're calling in and following us via phone, then please use your phone, press star six to mute yourself. That helps us cut down on noise and allows for a really solid recording when people wanna uh, hear this webinar later. So of course, this webinar is also being recorded so that people can view this at a later time from our website. You can find this recording and the PowerPoint presentation at calvet.ca.gov forward slash women bet, then click on our statewide webinar button. Please hold all of your questions till the end of this call. We wanna give our presenters plenty of time to get through their material, and then we'll reserve time at the end of this call, right around 150, 155 to take a few questions. If you're using our chat window through GoToMeeting, you can also ask a question via our chat window. So next I'd like to introduce um, our newest addition to the CalVet team. She's actually been here for a couple months now. Uh, this is Sochil Rodriguez Murillo. She is our Deputy Secretary for Minority and Underrepresented Veterans Affairs. She's also helped uh, with this presentation today and she and I are excited to work together and collaborate together. So Sochil, uh, welcome and please tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Lindsay, um, and a good afternoon to everyone. It's uh, great to join you all today, uh, to our partners uh, for uh, participating in this program, and of course, our Women Bets colleagues for uh, providing this event for us to connect. Um, so I am, uh, gosh, I am currently an Army Reservist, a sergeant in the Army Reserves. I joined CalVet this past November of uh, 2019. I spent prior to that 10 years at, at the state capitol under different capacities and have always been uh, closely engaged in, in, in public service and outreach and currently wrapping up my last year on, on the Wood Woodland City Council here in the town uh, I grew up in. And so, uh, gosh, I've been working with the veteran population at the unit level for a very long time. And so joining CalVet has been a blessing and, and, and such, such an honor to, uh, to be able to be out there and representing our, our veteran population throughout California. Um, as Deputy Secretary to Minority and Underrepresented Veterans, I want all of you to know that our division is focused on bringing uh, to you programming that meets the needs of veterans who identify as minority and are underrepresented. And of course, that includes our, our women veterans um, of the nearly 2 million veterans in California, approximately 34% represent, uh, identify as minority or underrepresented veterans. And so while we know that's a large portion of our veteran population, um, you know, minority and underrepresented veterans are, are likely, are less likely to access their veteran benefits um, than non-minority veterans. And so what we do within the division, uh, we seek to build a platform that speaks to this population and we want to uh, do so by supporting programs and events out there uh, that involve our, our diverse veteran uh, population. And so we are right now uh, turning our focus to what is webinars. And I think as, as we know, a lot of us have been impacted by these changes. And so um, what that means for veterans is an adjustment on their level as well, right? Um, the in-person contact has been limited, and now we're going to be uh, looking at how do we connect to veterans uh, via computer, via phone, and for older veterans, that will that will be a challenge. But so within the division, we are currently growing. Uh, right now, we have one program analyst, Jose Ayon, in our division, and in about uh, Monday, uh, we'll be welcoming another analyst, and then a week from from Monday. An, an office technician and so our di division is growing which is great because we can expand on on our programming and so uh, what we do is we branch out to to veterans and bring programs that help 
veterans deal with issues that they may currently be having, whether as a service member or now uh, retired from the service. And for example, you know, uh, just to give you a couple of those, um, citizenship and naturalization services are, are, are one of the services that we deliver. Um, discharge upgrades uh, for our LGBT community and beyond. Um, in the past, the division has supported uh, other events that uh, empower our diverse population, our Native American Day at the State Capitol, our LGBTQ Veterans Day celebration. We're amping up and, and now, uh, of course, uh, celebrating Pride Month. And um, I can't uh, you know, go on without highlighting uh, the unfortunate pandemic that's in front of us right now. And I, you know, a lot of us that work with our, our African-American and, and, and uh, veterans of, of color know that in the service, we you know, go above and beyond to uh, working with our comrades. And uh, we try to see, um, we, we see past color and we have a mission uh, to focus on, but at the same time, it's, it's undeniable that these um, unfortunate um, events are, are, are taking place and that uh, racism is well uh, alive out there. And we, you know, we need to continue to work together um, to make sure that you know, we, we let our African-American community and our African-American veterans, all of our uh, veterans of color for that matter, know that you know, we don't tolerate that type of behavior here at CalVed. And so part of the programming um, is going to involve our staff uh, becoming culturally competent in our, our diverse populations uh, of veterans. And so we're gonna continue supporting all of these events out there. So it's our Chavez Military Honors uh, Ceremony. And of course we have a Medal of Honor recipient recognition every year, uh, the list goes on. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we're connecting with you and other folks out there that could benefit uh, from our, our programming from our goal to reach our veterans and connect them to their services and do so in a manner where we're creating a space that our, our veterans can trust uh, coming to us. And if there's something that we're missing, if there's programming ideas that folks have out there, we want to hear from you. We want to make sure we're taking care of you. And, you know, just as important, let folks know that that we're out there. And um, for minority and underrepresented veterans who may not reach out for the pro those programs, you as an advocate for our veteran community, um, pointing those uh, battle buddies in the right direction and, and getting them to us in CalVet. And you know, we wanna make sure we, we work together as a family and continue to, to bridge that gap. Um, so with that, um, you have my information in front of you. We'll share my contact information as well as the division's information because we want to connect with you and of course, uh, continue to participate together in, in these events. Uh, so with that, uh, thank, thank you so much. And uh, Lindsay, I appreciate it. I will be here. Rachel, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. And uh, I echo everything that uh, Social said, our department, uh, Socho, myself, we all take the events of the last couple weeks very seriously and always through the lens of um, what we can do better to make sure that we are listening and we are understanding the needs of our veteran population, which is, of course, um, comprised of incredible men and women, brave and courageous, and they come from all walks of life. Um, so we want to make sure that we are uh, considerate and reflecting programming and messaging and support that each of our communities need. So we're here to do that. With that, I'd like to introduce our first speaker for this presentation. Um, please join me in welcoming uh, Ms. Jody Grenier. A little bit about Jody. She is the Chief Executive Officer of Foundation for Women Warriors. Foundation for Women Warriors is a 100-year-old nonprofit organization that works with women veterans to utilize their strengths, resilience, and achievements to overcome obstacles as they transition to civilian life. Jody began her career in the US Marine Corps, serving with 1st Marine Division G2 Military Intelligence. She deployed in support of operations Iraqi Freedom 1 and 2, and as an intelligence collections and, and watch chief. She was honorably discharged from active service and promoted to staff sergeant in 2006 in the reserves. So Jody, welcome, and we really look forward to hearing from you today. Thank you so much, Lindsay, uh, for having me. So, um, and thank you all for joining today. Uh, as the events in our country continue uh, to persist, um, taking the time to connect with our women veterans um, uh, is, it, you know, it takes us out of the everyday, but also, um, 
but also lets us understand better ways that we can stay connected and serve one another uh, amid this chaos. So uh, as Lindsay said, we are celebrating our 100 year anniversary at Foundation for Women Warriors. What we once started off as was an organization to serve widows, mothers of fallen service members and war nurses out of the Great War, uh, World War I. Over the years, we've evolved and we say, uh, you know, women's history is truly our history. So today, as we stand, we, soak it, we focus our, our services solely on women veterans and we exist to serve them in their next mission so they continue to be impactful to the world. As many of you already understand why women veterans, well, because we've been overshadowed and underrepresented and underserved for so long that it is our honor to serve these women. Next slide. So our programs today, um, we have a myriad of programs that honor and empower our women veteran community uh, to remain relevant and meet the most pressing needs uh, in the wake of COVID. We created an emergency program that is assisting women veterans with rent, utilities, whatever their financial needs are. Um, and we've removed uh, the eligibility requirement to either be in school or, a, or currently employed um, or agree to work with a partner agency to receive assistance. And those are our eligibility requirements for warrior assistance, which is typically our emergency stipends. Um, as we see people return to work, we're going to see a need for child care assistance, and that's uh, an area that we work in to provide stipends for camps, whether they be summer, winter, after school, and then, of course, daycare. We work with over 800 uh, partners locally all throughout Southern California and then, of course, nationwide, because we know that we cannot serve women veterans in every need that they have, so we ensure that we're working with Nonprofits that provide either one on one um, uh, job support or mental health resources. And so we're here uh, to ensure that we are um, uh, we're providing that it, it, those resources to our women veterans. Uh, we also do a connect with community program. Uh, this is typically in person where we bring women veterans transitioning active duty women together with local community members that work in various industries. The event or workshop is focused on relevant topics of how do I negotiate salary? What are childcare uh, considerations I should be having when I exit this service and so forth. Uh, we look at the, the workshop as twofold. One, we're educating our community about the needs of women veterans, but we're also bringing women veterans together. As we all know, we didn't serve in Girl Scout platoons where we're side by side with women. So that transition can sometimes feel solitary and alone. So putting women in the same room as one another is very transformative. We also partner with uh, Veterati and ACP. Veterati, uh, we have a, a, a platform or a link to our website where you can go and uh, register to find a mentor or become a mentor to veterans. Um, next slide. So as we want to talk about uh, how to keep women veterans connected, it's important to know, you know, what is the, what is networking? Uh, sometimes it can be a word that we're not too comfortable with, or it sounds off-putting. And networking is just basically the process of meeting and sharing information with individuals and groups of people in a field of interest. I like to call it relationship building. Um, making new friends, whether they're professional or people that you go on a hike with. Um, and it, you know, you, you don't necessarily have to start so broad. It starts at home. It starts with your family. It starts with your friends. And then you can work out from there. Next slide. So uh, the most important thing of staying connected is knowing what your purpose is for. Uh, why are you trying to stay connected? Uh, have, a, have a goal in mind. Um, for some people, especially now in COVID, we're seeing a lot of loss of wages, reduced hours and unemployment. So some people wanna network because they're trying to uh, become gainfully employed. Uh, other people are looking to network and to build relationships because we're stuck at home um, and we're not, it, 
you know, as the stay-at-home stay mandates are being lifted, um, we're finding unique ways to stay connected with one another. So some of these ways are uh, learning about careers uh, in various employment. In some cases, it's more social just to, uh, we're, we're definitely creatures, uh, social creatures, and it's part of our survival instinct to connect with one another. So in some ways, it's just to know that you're not alone and your challenges are not unique. Um, in other ways, it's to identify uh, referrals, seek professional uh, associations. So it's really to gain information, whether it's to um, further your career, help someone further their career, or just to uh, identify with groups much like your own sisters um, and, and feel as if you're not alone. Next slide. So build your network. Uh, building your network can seem like a, a, a huge task, but it doesn't have to be. You can connect with people you know, safe people you know. And like I said, these are friends and family and, and family friends. Um, and then you can reach out to additional circles. One thing that I've seen over the past couple of years is how massive uh, the women veterans movement has grown especially on social media. Uh, and that is many thanks to Melissa Washington and others like her for um, giving women veterans social media groups where they can go to and connect with one another. Um, so it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, this huge task. It, you can start little by little, but with a goal in mind, whether it's to get a new job or to advance your career, you can then uh, plan your, your trek, if you will. Next slide. And so social networking opportunities. At Foundation for Women Warriors, uh, like I said, connect with community. That workshop is something that we do in person, and we do that in Southern California, um, in Orange County. We've done them in LA, in San Diego. But we've taken uh, to hosting connect with community-like webinars online. The past month, we've done uh, various webinars to meet the most pressing needs. One was how to budget in a crisis, um, you know, how to review, I'm losing pay or I'm losing hours and what, you know, what do I need to do? Um, while a webinar doesn't necessarily seem like an area that you can network, I would say uh, that might be false. Listening to someone speak and give you uh, information on how to correct your course that person or that subject matter expert is now in your network. So I would say if you are attending networks and you're finding um, you're meeting, whether it's uh, leadership coaches or someone that um, is a financial professional, you can then connect with them on LinkedIn and so forth. Um, opportunities, always social media, uh, as we know, there's so many different groups that you can join. And I encourage you, Yes, connect with your sister veterans, but also connect with groups outside of the veteran community. We can be very insular, which can sometimes be a weakness. Uh, and the more that you connect with others outside of the veteran community, the more people understand our struggles and are more likely to help us. Um, on LinkedIn, you can connect with individuals and then of course groups, like I covered before webinars and connect with community. Mentorship is a really transformative way to expand your network, but also to gain um, great insight on career advancement. And the two ways we offer that is by partnering um, with other organizations that offer, uh, offer mentorship, but then also America, American Corporate Partners is one, and that's a year-long mentorship program where you're assigned a mentor, and then also Veterati, which is uh, a bit like speed dating for mentorship. Another way you can network is volunteer. At Foundation for Women Warriors, we have an ambassador program. And this is simply giving you a platform to one, advocate for the needs of women veterans, educate the public, but then also it helps you gain, um, gain a, a you know, more professional aspect on your resume in terms of being involved in a uh, more formal way with a nonprofit organization. Uh, also, you can volunteer with organizations that aren't veteran related. I know so many of us love animals. We love children. 
There's so many organizations out there that are doing such good work and could really use the talent and time of our women veteran community. Uh, we have some, we have immense leadership uh, capabilities and skills and our community is only better when we share those. Next slide. So like I said, we had a, a ton of webinars recently and we're gonna continue that. One of our webinars was the financial planning. Um, another one was how to thrive in COVID. Uh, as so many of you have been uh, negotiating, being a CEO of your household, having a job, and then also being a school teacher now and managing all these different aspects of your responsibility and those responsibilities that uh, have kind of fallen to the wayside because we can't meet in person. Um, we also did one around managing anxiety with mindfulness um, and really how to take care of ourselves with an intro to meditation and then how to organize uh, your life. Most of these webinars are, uh, we still have the recordings. So if you're interested in any of those, organizing your life is definitely around, um, you know, putting together the life documents that are very important that we sometimes uh, neglect, wills, power of attorney, how to make decisions so that in case you do get sick or something does happen, that you and your family know what the plan is um, and also giving that consideration to your family. For the month of June, um, we will be hosting a series of webinars that you can visit our either Facebook site or social media um, to stay updated. As I said, it's our 100 year anniversary, so we are honoring that on June 12th, which is also the 72nd anniversary of the Women's uh, Military Service Integration Act. And so we'll be honoring that with a, uh, a video or a documentary showing of the Hello Girls. Um, but through the month of June, we'll be focusing, June 8th, we'll be focusing on mentorship and how to gain a mentor. Um, and then throughout the rest of the month, we'll be um, meeting online to discuss career resources uh, and employment opportunities. Next slide. Uh, this is just an overview. If you go to our website uh, to get connected with Veterati, um, to find a mentor or become a mentor, you can do that through our website. And like I said, June 8th, we'll be having a webinar to discuss this further. Next slide. Resources. Uh, ACP is on here. Again, the link for our mentorship partnership through Veterati. We have two communities. Um, I, I will say that they're not nearly as active as some of the other women veteran communities, uh, which I, I would uh, encourage those or implore those that if you do get involved with a community, well, yes, you can sit and observe um, your community is only as active as you are. And so uh, we're always looking for great dialogue, uh, both on Facebook and LinkedIn. We post uh, relevant resources on job searches, how to expand your network and whatnot. Um, and then Foundation for Women Warriors, our website, we have a pretty comprehensive website that will walk you through our programs, how to become a volunteer or an ambassador, if you do need services, how to reach out and apply, um, and so on. We're here for you. Uh, we're here for our women veteran and their families. There's nothing there's nothing more that we want to be than to see a community full of successful women veterans and we're happy to be a vehicle and a resource for that. So I thank you all for taking the time uh, today and listening to my portion of, of this and thank you so much Calvet for continuing to honor and empower our women veterans. We are better for your service. Jody, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time uh, and everything that Foundation for Women Warriors is doing to support our women veterans. Uh, please take a look at their website, foundationforwomenwarriors.org, if you're looking for assistance, if you're looking to uh, engage as perhaps a volunteer or mentor with Jody's organization. And then um, we will definitely check out some of the webinar resources that you all have done um, we'd love to be able to get those recordings out for people as well. Okay, um, so our next presenter is uh, Melissa Washington with the Women Veterans Alliance. Melissa is a Navy veteran. She is the CEO and founder of Women Veterans Alliance. 
uh, which she began in 2015. She is also a disabled veteran small business owner, a speaker, an author, and an award winner who is connecting women veterans across the nation. So Melissa, um, thank you so much for joining us. Take it away. Hold on, we might have mute problems. Let me see if I need to unmute you, Melissa. Uh, are you there? Can you hear me now? I'm here. Okay, wonderful. We've got you loud and clear. Thanks. Okay. Hope I have an echo. I don't know if anybody has an echo. You sound good to me. Hold on, Melissa. If you're talking, we can't hear you. Sorry, guys. Pardon the inconvenience. Hold on one second. Okay. Ron? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'll repeat myself. So, uh, thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Calvet, for the opportunity to be on this call today. Hey, Melissa, it's Lindsay. Something's going on with your voice, uh, with your voice microphone here. It keeps oh. muting you. I'm sorry about that. Okay, let's try it again. Does that work better? Yes, let's try that and see if it doesn't mute you. It might be an issue or a glitch with our system here. Okay. Okay, you're far away from the phone. Can you come back? All right, is that better? Yes. Okay. All right. So again, uh, so thank you, Lindsay. Thank you for the um, opportunity. Uh, and again, you know, we are in some uh, very trying times. And I, I thank all of you for taking the time um, to be on the call because the more we're informed, um, the better we can um, help each other out. So um, like Lindsay said, I started Women Veterans Alliance uh, five years ago uh, with the intent of just getting uh, women together once a month for dinner and that's expanded upon. Um, so if you're not familiar with our organization, um, I, I have our vision listed on here. Um, and our, in our intent and what we do on a daily basis is pretty much what this is saying is we are connecting women veterans with each other as well as resources. So those resources can be everything from career opportunities to their benefits um, to others. And that that is what our vision is. And Lindsay, if you wanna skip to the next slide. So having our vision and this is, so having the vision and then our what our mission is and what we do is we've created a community both online and offline, uh, different resources. And I wanna, I wanna thank um, Jody for helping to tee that off regarding our um, different online uh, sources that we do have. So, um, it, and like many others, we've had to do a, a slight pivot in, um, as we don't have our, any of our offline events, which would be our in-person events. We pivot a little bit more to adding more um, online events um, with our webinars, but also too on our um, our social media. So if you want to just um, go ahead and Lindsay and just skip to the next slide, I just want to get into the. Um, and thank you, thank you, Jody. I, and um, I feel with our organization, Foundation for Women Warriors, Calvet, VIB, others, I feel we all complement each other, which is so important, not only just complementing, but being able to collaborate with each other to be able to help um, women. And one of our strong um, programs features that we have is utilizing social media. Um, we have, um, we're on Facebook, we have a Facebook page. Um, also too, we have private Facebook groups. Our private Facebook groups are only open to women veterans. We do vet um, the women, anybody that tries to get into our group. Um, as we wanted to make sure that it is a um, safe, informative um, environment that takes place in our specific Facebook groups. Um, if you're not on Facebook, you can connect with us on LinkedIn, we're on Twitter, we're on P uh, Pinterest, and we're on Instagram. And I feel that having social media is, is a great way for us to stay connected. Um, a lot of times, uh, you know, we may see more activity in the evening. Well, it's probably a little bit different now because a lot of times it's, you know, 
a woman maybe at, you know, at work all day, she's put the kids to bed and now she can get on social media and have some um, interaction with other women. And we want to be able to use those, those platforms to not only inform, but also engage um, as well as also have a little bit of fun. Um, if, you're, if you do engage with us on social media, you saw this post um, that did get a lot of engagement, which we posted um, this last couple of weeks. Um, and as I'm sure if, if you are a veteran, and especially a woman veteran, if you've ever seen the veteran parking only sign, um, that you know just, you may get some looks or someone question you. But these are just some of the things in addition to being informative and providing resources and events um, that we do post on social media because it's a great way for people to interact um, with each other on social media. If you wanna to advance to the next slide. So, Again, I talked about utilizing our social media to promote our events. Not only do we promote our events, but we also pr um, promote other events. So if you go to our website, you can look on our calendar of events and you'll see different events that are posted there nationwide. So if you do have events that you like for us to share on our website, um, please send those over to me and we can get those shared. So our events, our focus um, is on women, the women veterans, veterans events, career fairs, um, mental health, um, anything to do you know, with the, the COVID or to do with the different um, small business things. So those are the types of events you're gonna find on our webpage. Um, and if you're not receiving the um, email updates, you can uh, join um, on our website and um, on our newsletter. And also too, uh, we've also, we also do webinars um, as well. And I think again, great way to complement um, what, what others are doing in Foundation for Women Warriors. And we do have, and I'm gonna uh, make sure that I post this in the chat room, is we do have um, webinars coming up this month. Uh, one of them is actually Saturday. So if you haven't seen it, uh, we've partnered with the Veterans Benefits Administration um, to do a webinar specifically for women veterans. And this will take place Saturday. And the webinar will be given again by the Veterans Benefits Administration. So opportunity to ask some questions is an opportunity for you to learn more about the benefits um, that you have. Um, all the presenters will be women um, and most of them will be women veterans. So this is a webinar for you. And um, if you click on the, in the chat window, I've got the link to the webinars. We also have a couple other webinars taking place um, this month. Again, you know, just like Foundation for Women Warriors, we want to be able to give you that information um, and, and again, you know, connecting because this also be an opportunity for you to connect with um, people at the Veterans Benefits um, Administration. Uh, we also have a couple of different directories on our website. Um, one of those is our what we call our allies directory. Our allies directory are other women veteran organizations and you can visit our website. Foundation for Women Warriors is also on there as well as other uh, organizations uh, for, for women veterans that are on the site. You can also search the website by different keywords. And we also have the only online directory specifically for women veteran owned businesses. So you can go on there and you can search and on our site, we have the different um, businesses that are on there that are, for, that are owned by women veterans. So if you go to the next slide, So I have my contact information um, that's on there. You can email me if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out if you wanna just Google Women Veterans Alliance, we're out there. But my my goal, my, my purpose in life is to serve women veterans. And that's what I get up every morning to do is how can I best serve um, women and help fill in the gaps and, um, you know, and adding different programs or, or different collaboration. Um, there's there's so much out there that just women just don't know about. And there's so many more women that we need to be able to, to touch. And I think if we come as a collective, we can reach uh, more women and um, veterans as well. So again, thank you, Lindsay. Melissa, thanks so much. Um, and we'll probably have a few questions for you at the end as well. So good to hear that you guys are able to kind of uh, be as adaptable as uh, as our other presenters um, and organizations when it comes to re really what everyone's had to do in this time of COVID is um, kind of uh, kind of be flexible with um, with what's happening and figure out new ways to operate. Uh, we're doing that in our daily lives. We're doing that in our professional lives as well. So 
uh, also trying to find new ways to do that for um, uh, with women veterans. Okay, so our next presenter, I would like to introduce you to uh, Rebecca Aguilera Gardner. Rebecca is the Executive Director of Veterans and Business Networking for Success. Uh, she is also the co-owner of a successful Service Disabled Veteran Business uh, and a DVBE, uh, Disabled Veteran Business Enterprise. She is a, this is a second generation printing business. She has over 25 years experience in sales and marketing and has been an essential uh, part of the continued growth of this 48 year old company. Rebecca recently received the Trailblazer Award from SDG&E for her innovative work uh, that she's doing to connect veterans to business opportunities. Her enthusiasm to truly help veterans' uh, businesses grow is infectious, and she believes collaboration is the key to the success of the VIB network. So, Rebecca, welcome. Please take it away. Thank you, Lindsay, and thanks for uh, having me. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Just make sure. Yes. Sounds okay. Good. Excellent. Excellent. So, um, yes, I am the executive director and co-founder of Veterans in Business. So, what we focus on is the veterans uh, connecting with billions of dollars of, uh, of opportunities uh, as a business for uh, either a service disabled veteran business or a veteran business. And we always need more women business owners. So uh, so if you've been thinking about becoming a, a veteran business, um, you know, I'd love to talk to you and you know, give you some sort of directions of what the opportunities are available for you. And Lindsay, can you move the slide? <laughs> and so, so the VIB uh, mission is to provide education, training, resources, outreach, and to help the veteran business community. And so, so what we, we do is, you know, we offer all of that for free to the uh, veteran business owner. And that is because we have uh, corporations and government agencies who are looking for veteran business owners to connect with for these business opportunities. And if you don't know, uh, I would encourage you to check our website about and learn about the DVBE program, which is the Disabled Veteran Business Enterprise Program, uh, or the SDVOB program, that is the um, Service Disabled Veteran Owned Small Business Program. Um, if you are, uh, you know, if you have served and um, were injured, uh, you can be part of this program. And what it does is uh, gives 3% of a set aside to veteran service disabled veteran businesses. So I know DGS has the 3% for the DVBE program. So if you've never heard about the program, it's, it's amazing. It has helped our business. We're a DVBE business. It's helped us, you know, really, um, help us through, especially during these times, um, with government contracting and winning those contracts and getting that little bit of an edge over your competition in business. So uh, how we do that is a, a lot of different ways, and then I'll take the next slide, please. Uh, so, we, so one of the things that we are asking is, of course, uh, to connect and support the veteran businesses. We have a very robust uh, veteran business directory. Uh, so if you are a woman business owner and you're not on our directory, you can join for free. Uh, it is very robust. We want to know everything about your business and keywords and uh, give us a paragraph about yourself and tell us who else you've been working with and all your different certifications. And the reason we ask all of those questions is because when corporations or government agencies are looking to connect, uh, that's the things that they want to know. They want to know who you worked with. They want to know your keywords. So when you're filling out that uh, profile, make sure you really do uh, put, put the most information in that you possibly can about your business because that's what they're going to be looking for when they search. And there has been tons of opportunities um, when veteran businesses are on this directory. So I know that I know quite a few people who have won veteran-owned businesses who won contracts because they have been on our directory. If you're not a veteran uh, business and you want to support, and I would say encourage you to join as a buyer. You can join as a buyer for free and still have access to that directory. Uh, it's a fantastic opportunity to support the veteran business community, 
and and it is a nationwide uh, directory. So no matter where you are, you can find somebody who is a veteran business in um, in that field. The next thing I would say is to sign up for the VIB newsletter. Our newsletters uh, have everything from different events that are going on that support veteran businesses to uh, actual opportunities, uh, weekly opportunities that I get from everybody from the San Diego Unified School District to PG&E to uh, Lowe's. So if you uh, are looking, uh, I would really highly encourage you to join the newsletter. There's, there's a lot of really great information in there. And we also uh, share information on other people's webinars through our directory. We have an events calendar. So uh, I would encourage you to sign up for the newsletter. Uh, we have a lot of business resources. One of the reasons we uh, started the organization is because we found out there was uh, a lot of people who were charging quite a bit of money for, to veteran businesses to help them get certified or to get them connected with somebody in the utilities. Uh, so we uh, are offering all the business resources uh, for free. We're telling we're te we don't offer them ourselves. We just tell you how to find them. We say what what does PTAC know and what does uh, what can PTAC do for you or what can the veteran uh, business uh, um, VBOC do for you and what what these organizations and how they can help you in your business. So we're all about don't spend a dime until you have uh, check the business resources, see how um, what you need and how they can support you and uh, keep more money in your pocket. And then we offer tons of webinars and workshops. Um, we also have a veteran to veteran mentor, uh, I'm not mentor protege, a veteran to veteran business cohort program. And what that does is help you become a better leader. And uh, it's a six months intensive program and helps you talk about everything from, you know, financials to, you know, dealing when you lose a contract, how to deal with it when you win a contract and everything in between. It's an amazing uh, program. And if you're interested in that, we start taking applications for that in January. That is a free program and it's been highly successful. Uh, we're in our third year of doing that. And um, what we also want to do is just make sure that you are uh, linking and connecting with us. We want to make we want to hear your success stories. We want to put be that in between person to help connect you to the corporations and the government agencies that are really looking for you for some opportunities. Next slide, please. So uh, how we, how to stay connected, especially in social media. We've been doing social media since our our inception, and one of the best things that we know how to do is to link people so if you are at an event take a picture or or even if you're doing a webinar take a picture of the webinar post that you've attended this webinar link yourself and a link you know a few other people and that that's one way to grow your network and um, if you're looking for business and when you're looking to do business you're really looking to grow your network so, um, you know, that is one way that we have helped our organization grow. Uh, like Melissa said, you want to join groups, especially veteran women groups. Uh, there is the Vet Ladies or Vet Biz Ladies group on LinkedIn. They're um, amazing. And it's run by Michelle GI. And then also another way is comment. So one of the things about social media that I think a lot of people forget is that it's social. So you want to make sure that you're commenting on, you know, uh, somebody's success or a story or, or anything. And it could be as just as a one little line, interesting, you know, great, congratulations, whatever. Be social when you're doing social media. And um, so I've, I've always encouraged that. You can really create some amazing connections. I, I've met tons of people through social media and to become friends and, and supporting the VIB and we support them their businesses as well. And then if you find another way to share, share, another way to get connected is to share information that uh, you find interesting. If you're reading the newspaper, if you read, read a story and you found it fascinating, share it. 
there's always a little button on the bottom of those uh, stories so you can always share that's another way to be that uh, be that person that's always willing to share information so I highly encourage that if you're reading stories share the stories that you're reading there's always somebody who might be interested in that and then if you're not comfortable with any of that be an advocate and what I mean about that is if somebody's doing something you you can be that advocate to say great job or I just got my product from so and so or I just went to this webinar by you know by Melissa and it was great I learned this be that advocate you know share what you're learning what you're doing people want to hear about that information and if you don't aren't comfortable talking about yourself talk about somebody else be that be those people's advocates and uh, let let people know what you're doing next slide and then the next thing is just a couple tools that we use we always say look your best when you're um, doing photos you know I always I never send out the raw photo I always edit another cool thing to do is create a collage both of these are the ones that we use photo grid and pick uh, collage those are nice and easy you just dump things in and uh, it should be pretty easy to use also if you're looking for something a little higher end if you're a, a business and don't have a lot of money to hire a graphic designer uh, there's a great as a couple great uh, resources ripple I think it's about nine dollars a month and they you can just dump some photos in there put some text and they do the rest and they make it look professional uh, very high end you know you'll be you'll be really happy and they have all they have a video portion and an and a um, photo portion and then pick monkey as well is really cool software and then this is because we're all doing these uh, virtual meetings nowadays this is just a little um, thing that I want to share you know when you're doing these virtual meetings and you're in front of somebody you know be cognizant of your backdrop you know you want to make sure that your back backdrop looks professional that you get dressed that you look professional just because we're in a virtual world we, you know we should always you know if you're going to do something professional I would say always look your best always look professional and especially right now you might want to wear a, a shirt that has your business logo on it as well because that might be the only thing that they see um, so those are just a couple of the the things that I want to share about you know doing how social media and what we do and then the next thing is and next slide is uh, make sure that you connect with us we're on all of these different platforms we're on LinkedIn and Facebook Instagram we have about uh, over 15,000 followers on LinkedIn so if you do connect with us on LinkedIn you want to make sure that you're you know linking us for any of your success stories and we'll share that with our over 15,000 followers and um, Instagram Twitter I just highly encourage you to join any of our pages visit our website you can find um, my contact information on the website you can find all of our um, LinkedIn Facebook everything through the website and uh, the, thank you thank you very much Lindsay I appreciate it I, I think I'm good <laughs> thank you Rebecca I appreciate it um, so yeah uh, VIB network has been doing amazing things uh, getting veterans connected and starting their own businesses and I think, um, like so many of our organizations, as we mentioned earlier, uh, I'm sure you're pivoting just as much and uh, really kind of witnessing firsthand how veterans uh, who own businesses are having to change their models, perhaps. Um, my husband's a small business owner, and, you know, we're going through and facing the reality of um, things changing quite a bit, so, um, and, and what that's going to look like in our future. So, I know that that this is something we're all facing. Uh, so I appreciate you being available. Say, exactly. And you want to make sure that you're being, especially for a business owner, be succinct and clear with your message. You know, uh, this is the time you need to, you know, kind of really hone in on what you do, what you specialize in. And that, you know, that's the message you're giving out. You don't want to you just say, you know, we do everything under the sun. You want to be very succinct about uh, your messaging and make sure that it's clear and easy. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Um, okay, so let's uh, let's open it up. I'm go I've got a question or two. I want to go back to Melissa for a second. I know Jody had to jump off of the call, and I don't know if anyone else is on from Foundation for Women Warriors. Um, it sounded like Jody had to do um, another webinar. So Melissa, we'll go to you first. Um, you talked a little bit about ways that you all are pivoting um, to kind of the online uh, the online um, you know formats right now, just given that in uh, you know all the all the the fun run and the women's conference and uh, just the networking um, and business networking and social networking uh, meetups that uh, Women Vets Alliance had previously done. You're having to focus on something more online. Are you finding that women are getting the support they need? Uh, well, I find it so we get, you know, we get those the calls or the emails. A lot of it's just different, the different support because we all have different needs and we all receive um, our support in, in a different way. Um, so just, you know, finding other ways we can support um, women. And then once we find, and then one of the things too, is I find if I see something that's consistent, and then that's, that's sometimes too what stems other webinars that we might have um, based upon that or other, finding other ways we can collaborate with other organizations that already have existing programs. Because if somebody already has an existing program, it's kind of silly for us to create the same program. It's just finding other collaborators um, for those to partner with on those programs. Got it. Yeah, I think that's good. Uh, recognizing patterns and bringing content to people as they may need it. Okay. Um, and then are you guys, so for the social networking events, what are you guys doing specifically? Are you able to get um, people together through some sort of a Zoom meetings, or are people actually able to do like a virtual hangout, and that kind of satisfied the need satisfies the need for women to stay connected? So we have done that. We've done um, virtual coffee chats, um, as well as we did an event last. I think it was last month, and we did um, online uh, categories. It was just you know just something just an, again another way to just stay connected with other women, especially when we're sheltering in place. Um, and, and to be able to utilize the tools that are out there um, for yeah. women. So, so for people that want to know, there are, um, you know, a lot of virtual hangouts going on, the ability to still kind of maintain some of that need for um, checking in with one another, for staying connected. Good. That's great. So, Rebecca, um, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, can you give an example of some of the ways you're seeing uh, people in your network um, kind of move to this new way of life to to either like change your business models or to um, overcome a networking issue that would have been done in person. So uh, well, yeah, there there's a it's all of a learning curve for everybody right now. Uh, I think the biggest thing is is teaching people to be comfortable in front of a camera and not have somebody in front of them because uh, you know as a business owner you still need to. You still need to meet with people you still need to talk so I think that's one of the biggest challenges and we've been putting out things about you know how to you know successfully have a virtual meeting and what you need to do um, that was with the woman who she used to be with the an ABC station that's helped us do some of that um, but I think also um, people you know business still needs to be uh, done and I think uh, more than ever we're telling people you know really work on your your profile you know tell us who you want to connect with if we know we can we can help connect you with uh, somebody in the utilities and um, you know they, they still have all you know tons of opportunities especially you know DGS there's always opportunities uh, you just need to do the legwork and try to get connected with the supplier diversity person who can you know tell you about the different opportunities so it's just it's you know it's continually trying to get people out there. There's a huge need for PPE uh, um, right now. So anybody who's doing PPE, uh, I would say, you know, shoot me over an email. I'm Rebecca at, DA, at uh, vibnetwork.org and, uh, and let me know, send me your capability statement. I know that a lot of uh, corporations are looking for, um, uh, especially women uh, veteran business owners who can do PPE. That's excellent. Great. Yeah, we're definitely seeing um, 
seeing the need for it across uh, all populations, all manner of uh, kind of services deliveries, not just in the medical community either. So, and that's going to just be a continued need. So, wonderful. Um, okay, so let's open it up for one or two questions from our audience. If someone has one question, then we'll go ahead and take that now. If anyone wants to ask anything uh, over the phone. Hello. Hello. Hi, I have a quick question. It was mentioned earlier that these are pre-recorded so that we can listen to them or go back to listen to them if we need to. How do we get access to some of those webinars, particularly the one with coping with anxiety through mindfulness? Oh, great. Uh, so that is on the Foundation for Women Warriors website. Uh, let me go to our chat window and I'll give you exactly that URL. Um, Thank you. Absolutely. So that is at um, so it's foundationforwomenwarriors.org. Thank you very much. And then if you have any trouble finding that website, email us. It's womenveterans at calvet.ca.gov. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Any additional questions for us presenters today? You know, I just want to say uh, very quickly that um, the VIB network, um, we have a big national conference um, coming up in October, and we have decided to do it completely virtually, uh, which we're pretty excited about because I think that's going to give uh, people from everywhere an opportunity to connect. We have a special um, VIB veteran business price. Um, we're not exactly sure how much that will be, but it's going to be huge discounted um, but we also have business matchmaking so we're actually virtually going to connect you with corporations and government agencies and we're going to have amazing speakers and an exhibitor uh, expo all done virtually and a little bit of, of you know cocktails and conversation and some live music so we're kind of excited about what this kind of has pushed us to do and uh, to create this fun cool um, virtual experience for everybody. Well, that's awesome news, Rebecca. Um, you guys put on some really, uh, really great successful conferences. So this will be, you know, perhaps a model for the rest of us about how to do that. I know that we've been kicking around ideas about how to take some of our veteran content uh, and conferences uh, virtual. So I will be definitely trying to tap into you for lessons learned. Um, I don't know if Melissa's given any thought to that either with the conference that she typically does in the fall, but uh, it might be another opportunity there too to, to um, put our heads together and figure out what works best. So um, always finding, always trying to find new ways to serve our veterans here in California. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so that's exciting. Um, okay, we've got about another minute or two left. Do we have any additional questions? We might have one more, uh, and then we're going to put our web addresses in the chat window. Yes, uh, we got a comment from Sarah yesterday. We'll make sure to see that. Okay. Okay, folks. Well, uh, I hope you can join us for our next webinar with CalVet, uh, June 17th. Um, two Wednesdays from now, we are going to uh, feature a couple of organizations that are doing um, volunteering during COVID-19. So these are volunteer veterans organizations. Uh, that, that will provide some information about how they're uh, responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we'll, we'll speak to the Mission Continues and to uh, Team Rubicon, if not a few more. So please join us uh, for that next webinar. You can also find more information on our website. That's calvet.ca.gov forward slash women vet. If you look under our webinar page, then you can get all of the future webinars, upcoming webinars, and you can register for them as well. And then just follow us on social media on our Facebook page, and you'll be able to find all of that information. So uh, thank you again to Jody, to Melissa, and to Rebecca. And we appreciate having Sochil here as well. Uh, and thanks for joining us, folks. And we will talk with you soon. Everyone take care. Thank you.